Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us together around your word, around you, Christ. And we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive your word, that you would clear away all distractions and let our, our minds focus on you. And Lord, I pray that you would give me the words to preach today, that I would preach faithfully and pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So today we're going to be looking a little bit at separation and at unity, and we're going to be doing this by examining Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. Here's what it says. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made us both one and broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to one spirit or in one spirit to the father. So you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and with the members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom we or in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the spirit. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Now in this passage, we have separation and we have unity. He starts by talking to, to the Gentiles and saying, at one point, you were separate from God and separate from God's people, separate from the promise, separate from the commandments, separated from all of that. In fact, God was not in your world. And separation is such a hard thing. We've all experienced it, haven't we? Time where we have been separated from loved ones. It's difficult. It's hard. Maybe it was just for a short time. Maybe you were on a trip and you started to miss your family. Or we think about this past year, and we all became very accustomed to separation this past year. As they told us, don't go out. Don't visit other people. Don't, don't see other people. Stay isolated. Don't go to school. We're going to do your education online, and maybe we'll have some Zoom things for you. And it was hard. In fact, we're just now starting to really understand the damage that was done from all this separation and isolation. The damage to emotions and to our, our ability to communicate with one another. Depression, all of these things. And I think maybe the worst of it all were for those who were trapped in nursing homes. Sealed off from everything outside. No visitors, no friends, no family coming to visit them. And it was horrible. In fact, it was so bad that we had stories of families coming up, even though they knew that they couldn't get into the nursing home, just so they could stand outside the window of their parents or their grandparents 
so they could be in the same place together, be together again, so they could see each other with their own eyes instead of through a computer screen, so they could hear each other's voices. And for some, that was the way they met new grandchildren or great-grandchildren. The isolation and the separation was terrible. But here, as God is talking to these people, to the Gentiles here, they say, once you were separated, but now you are no longer separated. Now you are brought near. You are brought to Christ, to God, through Christ. You are now one. One with the Gentiles and the Jews. Because there was a separation there, right? They had their categories. They had their ways of saying, we're different. You're the circumcision. We're the uncircumcision, right? There was this separation. And, and God is saying, no, it's no longer Gentile and Jew. It is Christian. You are all in Christ. You are one. Now, we don't separate Jews and Gentiles so much anymore, but we've come up with our own categories, haven't we? You say, well, that's the black church, and that's the white church, and that's the Hispanic church. No, we are all Christian. Not black, not white, not Hispanic. We are all Christ followers. We are all in him, one. You know, we have, these are the, you know, the, the lifelong Christians, and, and those are the newbies, and they don't really understand how we do church. No, we are both Christian. Or you have Republican and Democrat. No, Christian. We have been made one. The dividing walls of hostility have been broken down by Jesus Christ himself. But I want you to notice something. This is not a call for unity or a call to unify. It's not. It is not a call to unify. This isn't God saying, y'all need to figure this out. You need to figure out how to work together. You need to figure out how to come together because this is ridiculous. That's not what's happening here. It kind of reminded me of, of me a little bit. Um, and my, you know, I, I've been, I'm not the healthiest person in the world. And I've been told that. I've been told, hey, hey, Kurt, you need to, you need to lose some weight. You need to be more active. You need to eat healthier. Right? And I've been told these things. I've been, I've been called to do these things. And sometimes I've done them pretty well. If you knew me a few years back, I was a lot slimmer. I was a lot more active. Now, not as much, right? And that's because it's, be, it's all due to my motivation and my self-discipline. And you may have experienced things before where you have those moments where you're standing in front of the fridge. You know, it's like, do I eat the carrots or do I eat the cake? Or can I eat carrot cake? And maybe that's the best of both worlds, right? Or do I, do I go for a run or do I watch one more episode on Netflix? And all those decisions that we make. The problem is that it's all based on us. And this isn't what that's like. This is more like if there was some way that I could be brought into a doctor's office and the doctor had some process and he does his thing. And then he walks me out and says, Kurt, you are now in the peak of physical fitness. You are completely healthy. You are the perfect weight. Your organs are all working exactly the way they're supposed to. Everything is perfect. Now go live in that health. It's all already done. Right? So this is not a call to unify. This is telling you, you are already one in Christ Jesus. Or if we think of this in terms of nations, there's a lot of, of national language that's in this text. You know, after World War II, what did we do? We said, wow, that was horrible. We should never do that again. So let's create some kind of an organization where we can gather together and we can figure all these things out so we don't have to go to war anymore. And we created the UN. How's that working? Well, we still have wars. We still have people that are killing people, right? We still have all this, this hostility because we're all still separate people trying, well, some aren't even trying, but trying to make this peace. But this is more like if God had taken everyone and set them into one nation, one place, and said, you are now one nation under God. You are now my people. There's no more British and Venezuelan and Libyan and American. You're with one people. 
live in the peace that I have already created. Right? You have been made one in Christ. And you notice that all of the language that's used here is passive. Right? You are being built up. You are being brought near. God is always the actor and he is acting upon us. He is the one who is doing it. And he has made us one through Jesus Christ. Through the one person of Jesus Christ who took all of the sin, all of that, took it upon himself, and he lived out the law perfectly. Right? It says that he, he abolished the commandments which are given through ordinances in himself. Right? In his person, he fulfilled the law and then he, he sacrificed himself on the cross so that we could be reconciled to God. And I think it's cool how he puts it that we are reconciled as one. Not as a bunch of individual people, but rather as one. That in that moment... In that moment, as we are brought in through Christ, we are made one, one body, one people, one kingdom. And that unity is what we can walk in. In fact, that's the language that's used. You notice the first word that's, that starts this passage is the word therefore. And whenever we see that at the beginning of a, a passage, we should always say, well, what was before it? Because that's what this is referring to. Well, what's right before this is Ephesians 2, 8 to 10, which is a big you know, passage for us in the Lutheran church, isn't it? For by grace you have been saved through faith in Jesus Christ, and this is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God that no one should boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do the good works that God has prepared beforehand for us to walk in. Therefore, you have been brought near. Therefore, you are no longer separated. Therefore, you are now one. This has already been done. This is part of the work of God, and he has set it forth before us for us to walk in that unity. He's already done the heavy lifting through Jesus Christ, so we are one. One body, one people, one kingdom, and we have peace with one another. All those who are in Christ because of what Christ has done. So you can see that in the church, there is no place for racism. There's no place for dividing ourselves in various ways. There's no place for, for the, the longtime Christians versus the new ones. There's no place for Republican versus Democrat. We are all one in him. That is who you are. And in fact, can you see how when we start to build those walls, it's like literally ripping apart the body of Christ into two, three, four pieces. Because sometimes we do that, don't we? We start to rebuild that wall of hostility that Christ has broken down. And we say, we're not the same as you. That has no place. It'd be like if here in Pasco County, we suddenly decided, you know what? We're done with Hillsboro. We're going to build a wall between us and we're not going to deal with you anymore. Well, that's just silly. Right? We're all Floridians. We're all Americans. We're supposed to be one people. Why would we do that? Well, why would we do that in the church? Even more so. Because that unity is not just some national unity. It is Christ himself. Our text literally says, for he himself is our peace. It's all him. And that may beg the question, then what about those who aren't in the church? Aren't we supposed to have peace with them? And yes, to some extent. But we don't get to that peace. We don't have that perfect unity with them because that wall of hostility has not been broken down. And sometimes we fall into the trap of trying to create a peace by saying, well, you know what? We can come your way. That sin isn't so bad. That, that way of living isn't so bad. We can kind of set those aside, but that's not how it is. What do we have to do with the ways of the world? We are of Christ. But there is a way to unity. We love them. And we bring them to the one who unifies us. We bring them to the cross so that that wall of hostility can be broken down and we can be one with them truly. One in Christ. Because that is what we are. We are one in Christ. So look at the person next to you. 
in front of you, behind you, across the road from you. You are one with them in Christ. And you get to walk in that unity and that love and that peace with them because of Jesus Christ. And one day, all of the ways that we try to build walls will be gone. And we will truly and fully be living in that unity that Christ has already given us. Amen. Amen.